Hi guys, I'm Rachel. And I'm Anthony Gerard. And we are Press, Press On Mobile Coffee. Coffee. If you're new here, welcome. On our channel, we talk about how we converted a vintage travel trailer into a mobile coffee shop. And in today's video, we're going to show you how we run our mobile coffee shop completely off-grid without a generator, so stay tuned. Hey guys, let's get straight into it. What does off-grid mean? So off-grid is not plugging into shore power at all. Technically, plugging into a generator is off-grid, but our setup is not even using a generator. Yeah, we decided to ditch the generator. It's really loud and heavy, and we just didn't want to deal with that, so. Loud, heavy, smelly, and honestly, I mean, you can get ultra-quiet generators out there. Very expensive. Very expensive, <laughs> and you're still gonna have to worry about powering up with gas, um, smelling like gas, and the noise. gas prices these days, like hard pass. <laughs> yeah, so. First step then is our Ficino espresso machine is actually dual fuel, meaning that it can run off propane or electric. Um, but of course, to go fully off grid without the generator, you gotta use the propane and that's what we're doing. Yeah, and so we also have a battery system that we will show you here where we charge our battery at home and then the battery has a life of about six hours and it also depends on what type of machines you're going to use. Obviously some pull more juice than others, so tell yeah. us about that. The battery pack system that I decided to choose is uh, from a company based out of Boise, Idaho. They're called Jewel Case. J-O-U-L-E. J-O-U-L-E, Jewel and as in like wattage and all Why and all did that. you choose that brand? So. Not really sure how I came across them. I think it might have been an ad that popped up somewhere on YouTube. But they're, um, they make these batteries, inverters, in one. So rather than having a, a battery generally by itself and then connect it to a power inverter, having two separate units, they have this one unit, pretty compact, super lightweight compared to other batteries, um, all in one, which is really nice. You can add on uh, more wattage really easily by just stack the batteries. Just right? stack, yeah, literally batteries stack on top of each other, on top of each other, which is really nice. But so, just to kind of give you an idea, if you buy a, a high-end battery, whether it's like a lithium or a gel battery, which you'll need for um, this kind of application, like a deep cycle battery, a battery by itself is going to weigh like 120 pounds, and then you're going to have your inverter, which generally doesn't weigh a whole lot, but it adds the weight jewel case for their battery and their um, inverter and in one is like less than 30 pounds it's super lightweight so when you say that it came with an inverter i know that our machine came from overseas did that inverter work with your machine was it compatible or did you have to buy something to adjust good question yes and no so yes it works as in the sense it powers our machine for the electrics that we need which i'll show you um but the, of course, the machine coming from the UK, I had to actually get a European plug for the machine, which generally you can't plug into US outlets, but I'm gonna show you how we did that too. So when you first tried to hook up the machine, there were some problems and you ended up having to call the company to troubleshoot. What was the problem? Okay, so the machine comes with an external water pump, which if you see our la or watch our last video, you'll see um, the water pump. So when I got the machine, being that's dual fuel, I thought you could actually run off a regular just US outlet. So I got a regular US outlet cord, connected to the machine, plugged it in, pump was running, but it didn't have enough power to produce water out of the, the group head here. So how'd you juice it up? I called the coffeeguy.uk, that's where I got the machine from. And he told me to swap out the outlet plug with a 240 volt plug, which I did to see if that would work. And it did. So what that told me is that I needed two hot legs of electricity in order for the pump to run properly. Now, generally, to run that kind of power, you need a pretty insane battery system and inverter system to run a machine that requires 240. So what I did instead is I, after testing it, scrapped the 240 volt plug, and then I bought a European plug, uh, which I'll show you here in a minute. And then I bought also what's called a step-up transformer um, that gives me the power that I need, but I can still plug it to a regular US outlet. Yeah, cool. So let's go check out the electrical system. Sure. This is the jewel case battery system. It has two clips on the side here. The top has a little handle. This is actually the inverter system here. So this is normally like your power inverter you would buy to connect to your battery. 
Uh, this is the battery itself, so really cool thing with jewel case, which I haven't seen any other companies do. If you want more power, so this is 1200 watts, you literally grab another one of the battery systems, stack it right on top, put this on top of there, and you can stack, you can have them huge. There are people that run food trucks with their battery system alone, which is pretty impressive. The power button is on the back here. When you want to plug it in, just a regular, kind of like a computer cord comes with it. This button here is just the power indicator. This tells you how charged your battery is. This is the solar input here. So the two cables connect from here to that solar controller and then the controller to the solar panels. This is just your little info panel here. So far, I'm really impressed with how well this battery performs. Um, when it charges, it has a little bit of like a fan noise to it, but nothing super loud at all. I put the battery here beneath the espresso machine as just kind of a central location. As most of my appliances are, you know, the cord reaches here pretty easily. So I thought it would be a good location for it. This is the external water pump I was mentioning uh, that comes with the Fricino espresso machine. Uh, and this is the pump that wasn't running to full capacity when I had it re plugged into a regular household outlet. So that is what I'm gonna show you next. I mentioned the espresso machine will not run off a regular household plug like this style here. So what I had to do is purchase this European style plug. And then I purchased this step up transformer uh, from Amazon, which I'll post a link to. And what this does is I plug this transformer into my battery system this cord for my Fricino espresso machine plugs into here and this actually gives me the proper amount of power to run the machine now so with the jewel case how many different things can you operate and how long does your battery last for a typical day okay so i decided to use uh, a 1200 watt battery which doesn't sound like that much but the machine uses very little wattage so on a typical day i'm using my espresso machine my uh, commercial fridge, and then I have my water pump that actually pumps my water throughout the whole trailer. A um, few lights that I run. We have a couple of other small appliances like the electric kettle for pour over or the Nutribullet for blended drinks, but we don't use them very often, so we can just get by without it. And then my coffee grinder, so that's pretty so much for appliances. You have a bun, but we decided not to use that anymore, is that right? Yeah, so I have a bun air pot brewer, um, works great. I use it primarily for the hot water spigot on it for Americanos, um, but it pulls a lot of watts. It's like 1500 watts, so I can't run that off of the jewel case. So if I do run coffee or if I'm gonna have black coffee, like say if I'm gonna do like a morning event, I'll brew the black coffee at home and I'll just put it in my air pots. It stays and that's hot for pretty quick to do. Oh yeah, for sure. And it stays hot for like eight hours. And I'll usually designate a couple air pots for um, strictly hot water. So then I have that for Americanos as well. And it's yeah. keeps it plenty hot. Another reason we decided to ditch the bun is just not stable in a mobile unit because it tips over. So we have pretty it easy. strapped up with bungee cords, and it's a pretty big uh, appliance to have. It's kind of top space. heavy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely something we would not do again. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I mean, black coffee, if I'm doing a, a wedding event, black coffee sells fairly decent, but on a given day of any event, Americanos sell over black coffee any day. Yeah, or usually or people come anyway. for the specialty coffees anyway. It's pretty yeah. rare that someone comes for a regular cup of coffee. Yeah, for sure. So in order to be completely off grid, you would have to not be plugging into your house. So how are you planning to charge your battery? off-grid. I actually purchased a solar controller from Jewel Case as well when I got my battery system. I knew I was going to do solar panels eventually, so I think it was like 60 bucks or something. It was pretty inexpensive. Um, but what that does is there's basically two cables connects from the controller to the battery, and then those two cables connect to my solar panels. I picked up two 100 watt solar panels from Amazon. can't remember the brand. I'll post a link to that as well. Um, and those on really in the winter time here in Idaho, it's pretty cloudy. So they'll generate some power, but it's not going to be very good. But in the summertime, it'll actually charge that battery by the end of the day. Um, probably keep it charged during use too. So, so as long as you can calculate how much electricity you need, you can buy the amount of batteries to power it. For sure. 
Most espresso machines take a lot of power to run them. This is the only one we found that was capable of running on lesser power um, and being supported by a battery system. Because it's fueled by propane, the propane heats the boiler, and the only thing you need the electrical for is the little button panel and for the water pump. So it doesn't take so much juice. Yeah, definitely. And, of course, as I mentioned earlier, but I can't stress enough, when running our whole operation, there's no noise of the generator. It's not have to worry about silent. stopping operations to fill there the was, generator with gas. There was one event we did where they actually told us to stop serving coffee because our generator was too loud. That so was like, pretty much the turning point where we were like, we gotta ditch the generator. The fuel efficiency of propane versus gas. This propane is super efficient. I filled up one you know, regular size propane tank you'd normally have for like a grill. It's mounted on the front of the trailer, which I think we showed in the last video. Since I filled it up, I think five events and it's still not empty. So it's really, really efficient. Yeah, I mean, anybody who's run a backyard barbecue understands the value of propane. For sure, <laughs> yep. And then of course having that toggle where if it does run out, it will just switch over to the other tank, so. Mm -hmm. Alrighty guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you have questions, please ask them down in the comments. We have an ebook on our website, pressoncoffee.com. If you want to see how we did everything start to finish down to the penny, head over there. We are going to be releasing version 2. Point. Oh, <laughs> you gotta say oh. oh I thought you were saying oh. <laughs> Don't forget to check out pressoncoffee.com for the updated version of our ebook. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Stay like classy. San Diego. Jinx. Version two point. No, are you doing point or point? Version two point.